I'm going to talk to you today about um, Work Manager. Um, first of all, I'd like, to thanks, I'd like to thank Carl for the invitation. Thanks very much. It's great to be here. Uh, thanks to Craig as well for the, the great first talk, top act to follow. Um, yeah, and with the, you might be wondering, with the, well, with the title like this, this talk could really go... There are many different places I could take that talk, but um, I'm going to talk about uh, Android and how um, and about how Google uh, is, uh, is replacing our manager, our work manager for us in Android. Um, before we go, before we dive a bit of the deeper, let's start with, uh, with the whole concept of job scheduling or jobs in the context of um, mobile development or Android development. So, um, in many cases in your app, you have a um, you have, a, you have a job that you like to do, which is uh, in this context, which um, is a synchronous task that needs to be run in the background. So something that you just fire and forget. For example, you want to say a user take a picture um, inside your app, and you want to upload it um, to your servers at, at one point without without the user really really caring when and how that happens. Or maybe you want to conduct some maths in the background without user necessarily being aware of it, just inputting some data and then you're doing the processing. Um, many of these cases, you only want to run that job when some conditions are met. For example, when you're uploading something to the cloud, to your servers, you don't want to try and run that job in your app when you, when you have no connectivity. Um, some, th some other jobs might be uh, taxing on your CPU, so you might only want to run them when the device is charging or when the, or when the battery level is, is above a certain, certain, uh, certain value. And in the early days of Android, there's been, there have been many different ways that the Android developers uh, would approach this problem. So uh, originally you would, you would just use an alarm, alarm manager. An AP, this is an API that was originally used for um, basically alarms. So it required a bit of uh, trickery to connect it to broadcast receivers, and uh, yeah, it was strictly time-based. Uh, now in the API 21, um, Lollipop, um, we, we, uh, um, we required a job scheduler, which was uh, which is a much more powerful API, but it needed, um, it needed the, um, you to target the version number 21. Uh, there was another, another attempt by Google, in Google style, obviously, um, which is based on Firebase. So this was called the Firebase Job Dispatcher, and uh, it, it gave you uh, abilities to schedule jobs all the way down to API 14, but you can't play, play services, so another, another limitation there. And there was also an external library made by Evernote, um, which, uh, which was um, probably the most flexible of all of those. No play services required, you know, API 14. And the um, last two are about to be phased out because Google is introducing a new shiny thing, which is called uh, Work Manager. Um, now, this is um, an easy way to schedule background tasks um, that will complete even when your um, app is killed or your device is rebooted. It does not require play services. Um, it allows you to query the status of your work. If it's a long-running task, you can query the status and observe how much of the task has been accomplished. Um, it was announced as alpha during last year's Google I.O. and it has only recently graduated to 1.0 stable A. So what I'm going to show you now is I'm first going to show you a bit of a, a, bit of a code in Android Studio to demonstrate the basic features of the API. And uh, then uh, I will go back to my presentation and tell you a bit more about, about the more advanced stuff that you can do with Work Manager. So, to go to the studio, um, it's a, bit, a, a tiny app that I've written. Can you make that bigger? Yeah, I can make it bigger. Thanks. I'll come up with my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Is that big enough, or...? Yeah. 
So, um, there was a tiny update I've written a bit, a bit, uh, a few words about the use case. So, the, um, uh, it's a, it's a very simple GitHub client, and whose, who's, uh, the idea for that was that the, it would, um, it would. It would allow you to um, select some re some repos, quick up repos as your favorites, and then it would check, and then it would uh, notify you whenever there was a new commit made um, to any of those repos. And uh, the use case for um, scheduling jobs here is that we want to have um, we want to ask the GitHub API uh, every 15 minutes whether there was a new commit made to, uh, to any of your favorite repos. So, um, if you want to schedule that using Work Manager, well, the first thing, um, yeah, so this is the fragment in which uh, the, the commits are displayed, and uh, work is done in, the, in a helper method inside a YouTube class. So the first thing, the first, absolutely first thing you have to do when you want to schedule a work using Work Manager is to specify. Uh, constraints. So this is the constraints variable, and um, there are different types of constraints that you can provide. So in my, in my, for my use case, I'm providing a, a battery level constraint, and I'm also providing the required network type constraint. There are a couple of others. Uh, there are a couple of others constraints, such as uh, that the, oh, the device, such as that the device must be charging or that the device must be idle. Um, and after you define your constraints. You um, you build a uh, work request object. Now, for my use case, um, I had to use something which is called periodic work request. So I'm using a builder. Um, if you want to if you want to have a task that is a one-off task, so non non periodic, just single use, you would use you would use a different uh, class which is called uh, one time uh, work request. For my use case, I use the periodic one. Um, I give it the, the worker, which I will talk about in a minute. But in addition to that, I'm, uh, I'm giving it the, my repeat interval and the time unit. I'm adding a user-defined tag that, that can be used to identify this particular work from within the app. I'm adding my constraints, and I'm hitting build. And finally, this gets enqueued in the, um, inside the instance of the work manager. Now, the, as, I said, as I said before, you have to pass um, a worker object to your um, work request builder. Now, what's, what's, hiding, <coughs> what's hiding inside a worker object? So, um, when you create your worker, you need to You've got to extend uh, a worker class provided provided by the by the API, and um, there's a method in there that you need to override. which is called do work, and this is where this is where you're telling it what 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 you want to do as part of your work. So um, so again, uh, for my use case, I'm um, I'm just taking a uh, list of the Repos that the user has favorited, which um, which are in here. So these are the repos. Um, then I'm calling the I'm calling the GitHub API to get the to get the particular commits, and then I'm ordering the commits by, uh, by the commit date and uh, doing some processing on the result. So as you can see here, the do work method needs to return the sinable the sinable worker the sinable worker dot result and um, whenever this is whenever you want to indicate that your job contains successfully you just, you need to pass a uh, success status whenever there was a failure you would pass the, the failure status and um, then you do your processing 
the default value, value, here is, value here is retry, and you can also return um, you can also return a retry uh, value if needed, and you can also specify um, when you return a retry value, you can also specify some back off conditions when you define your, um, your work. So um, this is a this is a very simple use case, but there are quite a few more interesting features in there. I'm going to talk to you about about those a little bit. Right. So one of, one of a very nice one, one of the very nice ones is uh, work continuation and task chaining. So this, this basically allows you to create uh, <coughs> um, chains of um, chains of work that you'd like to complete. For example, say you want to uh, you want to upload an image that the user um, that the user takes with their camera, but first you might want to compress that image to some to some more manageable size. And uh, this is an example of how how you do that. So you would um, you would create um, you would get your get your instance of the work manager. And then <coughs> you would you would start with begin with and this and pass your work re work request in here and then pass another work request uh, to that method. Then same for, for the other chain and at the very end you can um, combine those chains by passing again passing the list of the chains that you defined in the beginning. Now the interesting thing about, about that is that um, when it's configured like this, um, the task B is guaranteed to, to, run, to be run after task A, but the task D is guaranteed to run after task C. Um, there's, no, there's no telling whether task A or task C will run first, but, but this, this order is guaranteed. So B will only run after A is completed, D will only run after C is completed, and E will not run until both B and D are completed. Um, well, I said in the beginning about observing the result. So um, say you have, say you need to compress uh, an image file. You would approach that with um, starting with something like this. So again, you will define your, you will define your work. You will, you will pass your worker to a one-time work request builder this time, and you will build it and then queue it. And now, as soon as as soon as you know, queue this, uh, you are able to observe the progress of your task. So um, this is work manager is part of architecture components. So it works works quite nicely with um, with live data, and um, you can pass the tag that you define in the beginning to a method to a method called get work info by tag live data. This returns a live data object that you can observe in a, in a typical live data fashion, and you can you can then do your own processing on that, depending on, on uh, what state your work is in. A very, very, very nice feature is that is the possibility to pass and retrieve arguments to your work. So, for example, let's say you want to say, to say you want to calculate pi to uh, to 100 decimal digits, for example, in the background inside your app. Um, what you would do in that case is um, First, you, you, want, you would give some, you would define some arguments. Let's say you, you uh, desired number of digits that you want to high calculated to as, as your input. So you would, um, you, you have to create a data object, which you can simply create like this, and then call it ATX. Um, this takes a map of a, of a string key that you define, and uh, and the value that is in that case, that would be the integer representing the number of desired digits, for example. Um, you wrap it inside the work data off and you pass it into your um, work request at the moment uh, when you build it. Then you enqueue it and um, inside your worker class, you now have access to your, um, to your data inside the input, field, input data field. And uh, the output of your operation is available inside that listenable work worker dot result that you return at the very end. And um, yeah, looks like that's about it. So 
to summarize quickly, it's um, no play, uh, no play services needed, uh, compatible down to API 14, in, in stable right now, and um, by far the most flexible of, of uh, might be of, of all of the job scheduling solutions in Android. And um, and yeah, Do you have any questions? Go ahead. Yeah, so would manage runs as a, a background process? So yes. In the activity can be closed and the would manager to be Yes, exactly. So it's a, it's, it is a dedicated background thread. Mm -hmm. but that, yeah. Is there any lifetime on that? Is there a like, expiry, like with iOS, you know, the background process or limiting the lifetime? Well, there, there's there's no expiry. You can, you can you can cancel it from from within the app. You can have a, you can have you can put certain conditions when it should be cancelled. But if it's a if it's a periodic job, you can still have it running for eternity. Now, one thing that I, that I, that I forgot to mention is that um, inside here. <coughs> Any RX Java fans in the audience? <laughs> One, two. Okay. So, so um, if you if your app uses RX Java extensively, you can you have a possibility to instead of instead of extending worker, you're able to extend something which is called RX worker, and when you do that, you uh, you don't get a result. And here you get a single, um, which contains a result, which is uh, which is uh, quite nice. Um, Collection to Eric Java. There's another. There's another. There's also a uh, type of worker that's negative to work with, called in coroutines as well. All right. Well, um, there's. There's, to, to, in my opinion, there's there's more flexibility, but but and uh, uh, it's more in integrated with more closely integrated with architect with the existing architecture components, and the Evernote the Evernote solution will be phased out within, the, within a few months as well. So Evernote, sorry, are you, are you a fan of the Evernote library? Yeah, well, it is going to be phased out. So, so. so it's kind of like actually for Sherlock and. Uh, Google that we bought, right? Yeah. So they, they just... Yeah, yeah, it's getting. I've had a look at the at the repo the other the other day, and it, it actually they actually say it's getting phased out. And they recommend switching to Work Manager. <laughs> what can you do? What can you do? What, what can you do? <laughs> right. Uh, if you if you press some kind of result and then I know like your device is rebooted or your app is. Terminated. What happens when you get a result? Do you, do you, is your app restarted? How does it happen? Well, it, that depends on how you've. Um, that that will depend on how you've implemented the the observing bits. So, um, if you, depending on what you have implemented in your um, in your do work. Um, when the, when the task is successful, if you if you want to if you want to open an activity from from there, you you are able to. If there's yeah. some if there's some person, if there's some. Like farm broadcast intent or something to say it's finished. Yeah, that 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 will work when when the, when the device is rebooted or when your app is uh, killed as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, One more. I'm, hi, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so I'm particularly interested in the constraints things when you like when you create. The yeah. So you have like a like, constraint to prioritize this work for the manager to like for the work manager to like eventually it's like an event bus to manage which uh, like, which kind of event or work has a more prioritized. Does it have any like a, like a finding a like optimal solution for like finding a Pareto points or each constraint of work? You mean the? You mean what does it do under the hood? Yeah, yeah. Under the hood. Yeah, it's, well, I, I don't know that. For example, I, I don't. I don't know what 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 is defined as as battery not low. For example, there must there must be. 
there might be a value, it must not be de device dependent, but um, it's, um, I'm sure there are certain optimize, optimizations in play, but I don't really know the, the exact numbers. Because like in iOS, like uh, the alpha layout we are using is like, it's also prioritizing different kind of constraint, yeah. to find uh, several kind of solution, and then like by using their non-linear and then also sometimes linear function to find the best optimized solution for this constraint. So does this work manager do the same? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. It's, uh, I know is that you can you can well you can give it you can give it a set of constraints. So you can say battery not low, device idle, connected to network, and it will try We'll try to run it as soon as possible, as as all of the conditions are met, depending on the on the on the load, on the system, and what other processes are running. You can also specify. You can you can also give it a specific delay. So when you build your constraints, you can ask it to not run, to not run until at least ten minutes have elapsed since you've scheduled your job. But again, this will not be exact because the system will the system will, will try to, to do it as soon as possible but it will depend on the other processes happening in your system and how, how big is the load on the on the, on the CPU. Okay. It's it's open source, right? The the library. Yeah it's, it's okay. open source. Oh, open source. Okay. What what libraries it Sorry? Can you show the build gradient or just to show Yeah yeah so it's it's what um, I can show you Yeah, so it's, it's these these dependencies. So it's Android Android work, basically. It's part of the Android Jetpack for those for those who are Android developers. Part of the new Jetpack. Well, it's backward backwards compatible down to API 14. So quite quite good, quite quite reasonable. Um, is this something that you have been using, or is this something that you have been doing? I'm sorry. Is this something that you want, or is something that you're using? I've, I've, I've used that in my well, I've used that in my personal project. This is personal projects. This is one of the personal projects I've okay. used them in. So. Yeah.